Hi, this is Ray Shillings. And Bruce Abbott. Feel the ad love. A podcast produced by Radio Lounge featuring conversations with the people in our industry who make advertising and marketing impactful and fun. The stories take you behind the scenes in a variety of advertising platforms where we explore current trends and topics. And just so you know, Radio Lounge is a destination for audio production services for broadcast, film, on-location audio experiences, and digital media. We also offer podcast training, production, and distribution through our new podcast studios. Voice coaching and the production of high-end voice talent demos. Yeah, pretty much every day is a new adventure in sound, so drop by for a virtual visit anytime at RadioLoungeUSA.com. And today we've got uh, Rochelle Salinas in the podcast studio. She is the executive vice president of the Houston Automobile Dealers Association. What is going on in the automotive industry? How are people connecting the customers with the cars, with the uh, dealerships? And so, and Rochelle just has a lot of great answers and a lot of great information for uh, automotive from a marketing perspective and the overall health of the uh, automotive industry. It's going to be fun. I know you'll enjoy it. Rochelle Salinas is the executive vice president of the Houston Automobile Dealers Association. You might wonder what that is. Well, I'll tell you. It's a nonprofit co- corporation designed to support new car and truck dealers. HADA helps members maintain good reputations, provide opportunities to build business networks, and coordinate educational opportunities that maintain a competitive automotive industry in the greater Houston. I'm just going to say it's a a great collection of really nice people. Would that be a good way to put that? I think that's a great description. That's a good answer. That's, <laughs> that's a, a short, good concise, answer. I like right? that answer. Doing good things. So we need to change that paragraph on the website, okay? <laughs> Get so right that. on that, okay? <laughs> hey, Rochelle, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. It's such a pleasure. You know, you've got some great people in the organization that we uh, we also work with. Uh, Chris Poulos, uh, the general manager of uh, West Point Dealerships, mm-hmm. and uh, our dear friend Virgil Skinner. We have been working with Virgil since Long he was time. with uh, uh, Southwest and Clear Lake Infinity. Mm-hmm. Now yep. he's with Ford Penn Kia. Virgil has such a heart for oh, this community. He's amazing. And uh, he is doing so many things. It, it, he he really focuses on so much on the community aspect that he really is proof that if you are a solid community participant, good things will happen and good things will come your way. And, and he's proof of that. We've got Fort Bend Fit. You've got the uh, the cycling club, the Fort Bend Cycling Club. Mm-hmm. And uh, these people buy cars from Virgil. Uh, but the same thing with Chris. I mean, look at all the great stuff. They just put a new dealership out here on the Southwest Freeway, uh, the West Point Lincoln dealership. Beautiful, it's brand by the way. new. Mm-hmm. It's called it a gorgeous. jewel box, by the way, that design. It's amazing. I told I told the general manager at that dealership, I said, Man, that thing looks like a like a like a jewelry or a fine watch store. He goes, That's funny you mention that because it's called jewel box. So <laughs> just another reason to visit. But this has got to be a lot of fun for you to be a part of uh, this great organization. You know, it really is. I I didn't realize that my mm-hmm. destiny was going to be working in the automotive industry, even though my first professional paid job was at a factory in Mexico building fuel level sending units, which is the gas gauge inside the gas pump for cars. Wow. Really? And that's where I learned Spanish and got my first job in the automotive industry. And then when I came back um, back to Houston, I worked at an ad agency and a lot of my clients were automotive. And mm-hmm. one of them was the Houston Auto Show, the Grand Prix of Houston and a couple others. So it just all of a sudden became my destiny to be working in the automotive world. And I've been in-house at HADA and producing the Houston Auto Show for over five years now. And I absolutely love it. You know, the mentioning Chris and Virgil, they're two of our board members, and our board is a collection of phenomenal family-owned dealerships. And I'm privileged to work on the side that I'm not selling them anything. I'm helping them, you know, promote their businesses <laughs> and the community and and become, you know, a positive image in the community. So they all treat me very kindly. But the truth is they are very kind, family-oriented, generous people in our yeah. community. We're fortunate yeah. to have them. Yeah, what a great organization, too. And this is crunch time for you as you've got the, uh, the auto show coming up here on the uh, 22nd of January through the 26th. At NRG, we'll, we'll we'll talk about that. Why don't we do that? But first, before the auto show, there's an event going on. It's uh, the Roaring Twenties uh, Charity Preview Gala. Uh, you can enjoy an exclusive and elegant night at the Houston Auto Show during the Charity Preview. It's the 21st, of course, the night before. Uh, what what is going on there? Yeah, so that's our exclusive preview night to the auto show. I call it kind of the adults only look at the auto show, mm-hmm. and we're 
the great part is we not only ex- provide that exclusivity and that wonderful party experience amongst all the cars, and we've got an open bar and live music and plenty of food, um, but we're also benefiting for fabulous local charities. So this year we've chosen to support <clears throat> Bo's Place, Ducks Unlimited, Easter Seals of Greater Houston, and Ronald McDonald House Charities of Greater Houston, oh, Galveston. that's great. That's great. So mm-hmm. each of them providing services that our dealers affiliate with and recognize everything from grieving, sustainability, to helping children with disabilities and low-income families. So it's really wonderful to be able to embrace those charities that night as well and have a good time in a Roaring Twenties theme in in support of 2020. Very cool. (laughs) That is really smart. Do you think of that? Of course. (laughs) There you go. That's why they pay her the big money. (laughs) (laughs) You know, and to add to – and then we talk about the audio show itself. It's going to be uh, um, – here at the new year with 800,000 square feet at the Energy Center, which is a phenomenal place for you guys to be uh, in many ways, uh, right? Yeah. I mean, we're able to fit 40, nearly 40 different manufacturers all under one roof. Mm -hmm. So everyone knows that has been to buy a car in Houston. It can be a real pain Mm -hmm. to have to drive from dealership to dealership to haggle and test drive each different vehicle and all of that. Well, at the auto show, it's all under one roof. So you can easily comparison shop. And then we've got 80 different vehicles that you can test drive. So all these different manufacturers provide bring out their top model lines, and you can go on a test drive right outside of the back of NRG Center. I was going to say, where, where do you San have room Felipe. to do that? Oh, yeah, so you can take it on the road. Yeah, we've got that. multiple options. So we've got the indoor ride and drive lounge that you actually get in the vehicle, take it out onto <clears> Houston <throat> roadways, circle back in. It's about a five-minute test drive. Circle back in and park, repark the car. We've got that same kind of setup, but in the front outside of NRG Center um, with two different manufacturers. And then we also have two obstacle courses with Camp Jeep and the Ram Test Track, uh, Mm -hmm. where you get to ride with professional drivers through some really cool obstacle courses to test out the capabilities of the vehicles. That sounds like fun. So when uh, we'll be doing anything with uh, flying cars at the auto show, Terra Fugia is a $300,000 flying car. Wouldn't that be kind of cool to have there? I would love to show that off. (laughs) I think the, the hot, the hot trend right now is all the EVs, electric vehicles, and, and hybrids. That's a real trend. I mean, Jeep just announced that they will have their full line of vehicles as an electric model in the next three three to five years. Wow. So that's definitely the trending aspect right now. That's one of the questions that we had for you a little bit later uh, as we get into uh, 2020. Uh, so the auto show, uh, it's the 37th auto show, Jan 22nd through the 26th, the largest show in the South. And the first place in 2020 where you can see, hear, touch, even drive the most heart racing cars and trucks from more than 30 of the world's top manufacturers. Are, are Tesla going to be there by any chance? Tesla will not be at the auto show. Okay, so we won't see that weird looking truck then. That's all no. right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that, that thing's scary looking. I was like, really? Somebody, somebody designed that? I'm not sure. But Elon is a person. Whatever great you person. can get attention for, right? Exactly. <laughs> uh, well, look at what he sent into space. I wonder where that car is now. It's not very close to the earth anymore. So to throw everything into a, a even a, a bigger mix for you, uh, coming up here uh, next week, <clears throat> as we're recording this podcast early, on the uh, on the 15th, you're going to be at the Junior League on behalf of the American Advertising Federation. And you were doing a, a presentation called Marketing Automotive, uh, the Automotive Industry Beyond 2020. Touch on a couple of things you're going to talk about at that presentation. Yeah, so I'm going to bring uh, one of our local car dealers and our newest chairman of HADA with me, W.C. Smith. Uh, he runs with his father the Monument Chevrolet out in Pasadena. And it's going to be really great to have his kind of direct dealer perspective. And we're just going to talk about what what they're seeing as dealerships moving forward and the future of the dealership and where advertising is going. I mean, everyone in the advertising knows, ever, advertising world knows that everything is moving so heavy digital. Well, is that where dealers are really getting information and leads from? Are leads what they're looking for? We're going to discuss some of that. We're going to discuss buyer behavior and how to reach that particular market because it's not the same today as just getting people into the dealership because people are doing test drives virtually first before they decide what dealership they're going to. So we'll touch on some of those aspects. We'll talk about the auto show and its uh, marketing opportunities as well because a person spends you know 30 seconds seeing your commercial, 20 minutes on the internet reviewing you, 
10 minute visit to the dealership to see if they like you, but they spend three and a half hours at the Houston Auto Show. So, you know, what are some of those marketing opportunities that we've got there? And and then WC will put his take in on how they're advertising for their dealership and what he's seeing other um, Chevrolet de- dealers doing in the community. Too. I like that. A very personal touch on a very uh, some seemingly complicated uh, uh, advertising mm-hmm. That's right. model as well. That's uh, Wednesday the uh, the 15th uh, at the Junior League, by the way. It uh, starts at 1130. And you can go to aaf-houston.net if you want to find out more and get your tickets uh, to that as well. So we'll see you there, too. I can't wait. Another place to go, and you'll have your Houston Auto Show T-shirt on so everybody knows that's why you're there. I like that. <laughs> and, of course, W.C. Smith. We've never had the chance to meet him, so it'll be a pleasure to, to see him at that event as well. You know, as we're rolling into uh, 2020, very swiftly, yeah, I might add, how healthy is the automotive industry this year? Well, we, you know, when I started in the automotive industry in about 2011, um, that's when things were finally picking back up from the 2008 crash. Oh, yeah. And we've been on a really strong uptick for quite a while. And I think in the last two to three years, 2015, I think, is our record sales year that we've ever had. We're kind of stabilizing back to, like, reality (laughs) zone, you know, everyone was feeling a lot of inflation and confidence in the in the in the economy. Now I think we're getting a little bit back to reality. So year over year sales are slightly down by a few percent. Um and that and that's nationwide as well. Cars are lasting a lot longer. Financing is going to seventy two months now. Yeah. So it's taking people a longer time to decide to buy a, a new car. So the industry is slightly down if you're just looking at the number of vehicles sold but as far as dealerships go um, financially they're being they're very successful they're all stable everyone's looking forward to a good future and you know thinking about what what will the future change changes be when electric cars are coming in and they're not making as much money on the service side and changes it from manufacturer agreements and such. So you know, That's an interesting comment that you just said. So an electric car would have a tendency to have less of a service need, is Correct. that right? Why is that? Well, you don't have um, all of the oil and fluid parts that you would have. You don't have the same, the same mechanisms that run the vehicle when you have a combustible engine. So you have less maintenance when it comes to that. It's more about the digital side of the components, the computer, and the battery within it all and the braking system versus every other little piece of element that goes into a mechanical car. What are some of the other challenges that you're seeing the automotive industry facing aside of that? Well, there's a couple things um, all across. It, very, it varies widely across the industry, right? So politically, there's the, the issue with the tariffs. And Trump's negotiation with what's going on with what used to be NAFTA and now the new agreement, I think we've come to a good place because so many, you know, everyone touts the American made vehicle, but really it's globally made. Mm -hmm. All vehicles are globally made. They're assembled here and that makes it American. But these parts are from here and these parts are from here. Yeah. So the tariffs can really impact um, the cost of a vehicle, which then impacts everyone down the line all the way to the consumer. Um, on the industry workforce side, we've got a shortage in technicians. You know, our culture in the U.S. has really pushed people to for that four-year university degree. And across the board in skilled labor, the indus- industry needs are, are very down um, or, or down on what labor is available. So we're seeing that in the technician and mechanical world also. And so we're going to have a shortage of mechanics at dealerships and body shops across the country. Um, At HADA, we're working with students to inspire them to get into this industry, to see this job not as necessarily a skilled labor position anymore. It is an educational, um, technical position because so many things are computerized. You know, it's no longer getting your hands dirty in the body shop. That's it's, true. How it's true. hooking up the computer, running the diagnostics, thinking about problem solving. So it's a very different industry. And these these technicians are making six figures. Yeah. People don't realize that that it can be that lucrative as well. So we have a full um, training and scholarship program for technician students to try to help fill that gap a little bit, but that's definitely one of the challenges facing in the industry. 
And then I think the third is the consumer um, buying behavior and how, you know, younger people are buying cars in different ways. And the world is so digital today, the dealer experience, the dealership experience has to be slightly different, um, I think, in the future. And what you're offering, what those incentives are, what your additional programs are, and the full-on experience. People want personal niche experiences today, not just come in, sign papers, take three hours and leave. Like there's got to be a little bit more to it. It's a whole different ball game now, Absolutely. really, from the buying perspective. It's a relational thing. Are car buyers today smarter than they used to be? They're probably too smart. <laughs> <laughs> there's certainly no shortage of information out there. I think all at. of us are too smart on all topics um, these days, right? But uh, yeah, I mean, you can, and there's so many laws as well that protect the consumer when you are buying a car because that internet price is what has to be honored. It can no longer be haggled in that way. So now, you know, I go to one dealership and I, on website and I see this price, well, I know I'm going to get that price. So you don't have that same kind of negotiating experience that people still have that stereotype for. You know, radio uh, has always been a big part of automotive advertising, not only in Houston, but uh, from a global perspective, or at least from the United States perspective. But now, uh, what are you seeing change uh, in that mix? Uh, there are a lot of other channels available. What is changing there? You know, I think dealers are looking at where buyers are making decisions is a big part of it. And they're making those decisions in that research process, which is online. When they're doing YouTube test drives and comparison shopping and checking their financing quotes all online on various websites that are helping them make those decisions. So being able to do digital advertising that visually stimulates, that shows the vehicle that they're looking for, that shows a feature that they've searched for in their Google search bar, um, all of those kind of things, I think, are really driving um, advertiser or driving the, the dealer's decision to advertise digitally. I think when it comes to radio and traditional advertising, it's about the dealership experience. People want it. They they want they don't care where they get their car from. Like they just want that car. Mm -hmm. So they need to care. They need to make that dealer decision based on that dealership. Right. Mm -hmm. So where they're going, they, they just want that car. So they have to decide, OK, I'm going to go over here to Bruce's dealership because he's really nice yeah. and he's going to give me free coffee and also a notebook. And he's going to make sure I'm on his Facebook page because I bought the car and it's going to be a whole experience um, versus just me picking up a vehicle. And so that traditional advertising is a great platform to explain you know, what the dealers can offer. And that was my, that was actually my next question is what are the dealerships doing? I mean, everybody has their story of the car buying, you know, woes of the experience and just having a miserable, what are, what are the dealers really, what are they doing now? Uh, you know, maybe just beyond free coffee or a, mm -hmm. a notebook, what are dealers doing now to really make this a, a, a more painless process for consumers? Well, they're definitely finding ways to slim down the process, the, the paperwork process and go, going digitally where they can lawfully. So that's helping make things faster. Um, they're offering more experiences to get people into the dealerships, hosting special events, even if it's um, Virgil is known for his um, pet adoption day oh, that yeah. he has. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah, know, they have veterans barbecues and all these special events to get people in. I think that builds loyalty um, and admiration for dealerships. That helps. They're also a lot of they're offering, OK, I'll come to you and give you a test drive. You want a test drive? Don't worry about driving all the way to my dealership. I'll bring smart. the car to you. Very wow. smart. So those kind of personal touches, I think, are making a difference at dealerships. Have you if you've been to one of Virgil's events for Fort Bend Pets Alive, he turns his dealership into a shelter. Mm -hmm. Now, that could be a, a kind of a funky little thing to do. <laughs> True. But I got to tell you something. There were so many people there and they were more. Of course, they were interested in, in looking at the dealership and the cars, but I guarantee you a lot of those people came back and bought a car. For sure. Because mm -hmm. he did that for Fort Penn Pets Alive, which is a, a great organization as well. You work with a lot of uh, a lot of other organizations, too. You did a thing for the, uh, uh, f uh, for the uh, Houston uh, Professional Firefighters Association Charitable Foundation. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so at HADA, <clears throat> part of our whole mission is representing the the entire dealer body of 180 rooftops or 185 rooftops in Houston 
as a community representative in community service. And so one of the things we did most recently was we supported the Houston Fire Department in obtaining two new canine trucks for their arson dogs that investigate fires. So they have these very talented pups that investigate arson cases and go out and sniff out the accelerants that started a fire. Wow. And previously, those dogs were in very old, non-AC uh, pickup trucks. Mm -hmm. And what we found out in speaking with these um, detectives was that the 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 dogs are getting contaminated with soot and all the things that's in the fire, right? Mm -hmm. And and then they're getting in the truck, dirtying the truck, now contaminating the breathing air of the firefighter investigator himself. And so we wanted to provide them with vehicles that were safe, prepared for the dogs and the firefighters themselves. And so we got these brand new Ford pickup trucks. They outfitted them with these special cages for the dogs, a washing station to wash the dog off. Everything, it's not just the dog jumping into a cloth seat anymore. It's this beautiful boxed cage that it can safely be contained in. The firefighters have AC to cool off afterwards, and there were they were very, very happy to have these new pickup trucks. So the toughest part was teaching the dogs how to drive? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. it's, a, it's a standard. It's a, sometimes it could be a little... You know, I don't know. You know I, I'm not a dog, so I wouldn't know that. Uh, Rochelle, Salinas speed, the executive, you know. <laughs> Rochelle Salinas is the executive vice president of the Houston Automobile Dealers Association. So what are some of the newest uh, ways that dealers uh, are trying to uh, grab the attention of you and me? I think they're still keeping cars as the stars, you know. I mean, the manufacturers are doing a great job with bringing out the latest technology and talking about their features and the incentives that they can offer people today and really paying attention to what the consumers want and need in their vehicle because we spend so much time in our cars, especially in the Texas market. Oh, yeah. You know, and that's that's the great part of the Houston Auto Show is they really get to show off all of those features and like looking at some of the lineup of cars for this year that were that are coming out, they're going to display the new 2021 Chevy Tahoe will be revealed at preview night and then on display at the auto show. Hmm. And it has this new safety technology in it. It's got all your latest and greatest um, sensors and cameras and connectability and, you know, all of those aspects, I think, are dealers are really drawing on to promote the vehicles. And then providing that one-on-one -on -one customer service. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Why does everybody want to buy my car? Why, why is that so important in the automotive industry these days? Well, that's getting very technical and behind the scenes of the car dealer business. Um, but That's where we want to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have um, – Share the dirt. <laughs> you know, the manufacturers put – give them in inventory and the dealers ask for a percent – certain amount of inventory and if they meet that inventory rate they're given extra incentives and they're not really making money off of the sale of the vehicle anymore you're making money off of the number of vehicles that you sell because the manufacturer is rewarding you for selling that larger quantity not just one or two vehicles so if a dealer is possibly seeing that oh wait we're not going to reach that incentive mark we're going to need to sell some used vehicles because they make more prop percentage profit off of a sale of a used vehicle sure. today. And pe consumers are smart. They don't all want a, a new vehicle of the, you know, it, the value drops immediately and mm -hmm. such. So they can, instead of buying a $60,000 Lexus, they can buy it for 40,000 used. Sure. So the dealer wants to be able to sell that and have that better profit margin on the used vehicle side too. And they need your car to be able to sell it. <laughs> Perfect. Right. Done deal. The underbelly of the automotive industry, we just discovered that. And it's not a bad place to be. Either. Not at all. No. And, and it's really cool what you guys are doing uh, for this industry. It's an important industry for us, for this community, for the state, for the country as well. And it sounds like you're having a lot of fun doing that as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it doesn't get better than the smell of new cars. I like that. <laughs> I oh, saw that yes. slogan on your website, too. It's wonderful. So we a smell. lot of stuff coming up here. The uh, The preview is uh, the 21st, and you can go to the website, uh, the uh, Houston Automobile Dealers Association website, to find out more about that as well. If you want to go to the preview on the 21st, or you cannot miss going to the Houston Auto Show the 37th, the 22nd, to the 26th of this month, January. Uh, it's going to be big, 800,000 square feet of 
new car smell. That's uh, right. Which is a good thing. And, of course, we'll look forward to seeing you on Wednesday, the 15th, uh, for the American Advertising Federation Houston uh, at uh, the uh, Junior League as for our lunch in marketing the automotive industry beyond 2020. There is so much to talk about, and, uh, and this is a, a wonderful story. Uh, we are a great city to have an organization like this. I mean, we are drivers. We go places, That's and right. we are, what is it, 700, how many square miles? 650 uh, square miles or something like that is, but... of, of, of Houston. So good chance is you're going to be driving something, and that's a good thing. And you didn't have to drive that far to get here today. Here in I did, Earth. thankfully. I, I like that. Rochelle, thank you so much, and thanks for the great work that you do on behalf of the, uh, the, the, the automotive dealers in Houston. And as I said before, thanks to our friends uh, Chris and Virgil for being a part of this as well. You've got a great organization. Thank you so much. It's an honor to participate with you all and be here today. We'll hope to talk to you soon. Same. And thank you for listening to the Radio Lounge Feel the Ad Love podcast. You can visit us at RadioLoungeUSA.com. Subscribe to our podcast at iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcast. Hey, do that. That way you never miss a show. Your rating on iTunes will help us grow. And don't be afraid to share what you've heard today on social media. Until next time, come to the Radio Lounge and feel the ad love. Feel the ad love. Oh, I love that. Copyright 2020 Radio Lounge. All rights reserved. We'll see you next time.